So in the previous video, we looked into naive forecast and now we will look into the average, total averaging method of forecast, okay? And slowly we'll move to a bit complex models. But the one thing you will see is that what we will do, we will just simply add on in these simple equations. In the, in, in, after some time, you will see we have suddenly a quite complex model, okay? So here, the idea is that the forecast of today or any point in time is the average of all the period of time of data available up to that point in time, okay? And to refer to that one, here we use this notation y equals to t minus i, where i refers to periods, previous periods. So if it's only one period available, so it will be the average of the last period, that will be the same value because when we take the average of only one value, it will be the same value. But if we have two value, then it will be t minus two, right? When it will be three values, then it will be t minus three. So we will take average of all the last three periods. When we will be in the, if, if data is available for the last 10 periods, then it will be t minus 10. So we will take the average of all the last 10 periods, okay? So that's how it works. So now let's have a look in Excel how it works. So in the, in the previous video, we are looking to naive forecast and we will still keep it. And I will just put naive error n. So I know that it's about naive forecast, okay? But now I'm going to do the averaging. And then my error, I will call it error a v g, okay? And how will we do this method? So the first one will be empty. And the second point in time, our forecast value will be more or less same as what we have in the first period, okay? This one. Then in the second one, it will be average of the first one and the second one. So we will say average, and then we say, okay, this is our first value, and then we fix it by pressing F4. If you do not have a four in your computer, maybe one idea is to just put dollar symbol before D and before two. And then we'll put this symbol here. And then the next value, okay? And then we close our bracket. So what happens is that now we fix our first value to the first one that we have. And then when we'll drag this, this cell, then it will take all the values up to the latest available period. So let's have a look here. So here we are, we are taking the average of the, these two, the previous two available, right? Now let's just drag it. If I double click, it drags until the bottom, okay? And here also, uh, after this period actually, we will not have any other values and it will be the same as this one, okay? So I will just uh, change it manually and then I will just put it here manually. And these values, yeah. I should maybe actually put a break here. So what we did, because after this point, we will not have any other data and we will not be able to take average of any new information. So we will just stuck with the, with the one up to this point, okay? Up to this point here. And then we'll just have the same value. If we do dynamic forecasting, we'll have the same value. But if we do a static forecast, then actually we will have, we can incorporate this information. So now, uh, this is our forecast and as you can see it worked pretty well if I check randomly click here you see it took the average of all the previous values up to the, this point it didn't take the same same period but the previous one up to the previous one okay so now we will do again the same thing to calculate the MAP as we did for the naive forecast we start a function and then we go for absolute and then we check the difference between the actual value and the forecasted value. And then we divide it by the actual value. We're just filling up in this equation, MAP equation, okay? And then enter. So this is our error rate and I'll just double click here. And yeah, I will just make it look nicer. Then we have all the values up to this point. Actually, if I drag it, I think we will have the equations here. If I drag it from the previous ones. So here what we did, we just took the average of all the error, absolute error percentages. 
and then we multiplied it with 100 okay so one thing we see is that in this total averaging approach the overall MAP is poor than the knife forecast approach but actually it is better for the test sample period let's move on to the next method